here is go back, 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 back. You're under arrest. It's either all okay or none of it's okay. I am unhinged. Shots are continuing to be fired. I need to be on a leash, a tight leash. Get on the ground. Get on the ground right now. If you don't get on the ground right now, I'm gonna make a video about you. Fine. You leave me no choice. Prepare to be epically owned, noob. What's up, party people? My name is Tom, and today we're gonna be talking about iDubs and Anissa. I'm giving uh, commentary channels new clips. I'm honestly pretty tired about even thinking about iDubs. It's just sad at this point to see his career sink into the Black Sea. As I stare out over the beautiful Bulgarian homeland, okay? Uh, I'd rather think about my relationship with my my farm animals and my uh, my apely looking family than freaking iDubs at this point, to be honest with you. But Ian and Anissa are not afraid of running their mouth. In fact, they seem unable to let go of what happened with Creator Clash, with the whole Sam Hyde drama, with what happened with Froggy Fresh, what happened with the entire commentary community making fun of them, and and now, Anissa has called out commentary channels in a pretty unhinged rant. So I, I have to respond, guys. Look, my, my reputation is at stake. Idubs is calling us out. I mean, Idubs' wife is calling us out or something. Commentary YouTubers have no idea what it is to work a normal job, let alone put on a whole event, okay? You have no clue. Cut my life into pieces! Have you ever seen someone so mad? Anissa, I know you're watching this, okay? I'll have you know that I worked in the coal mines in Siberia for 30 years before I became a YouTuber. I don't have any legs anymore. They got blown off by thermite. Surprise! So put some respect on my name. You f***ers that are looking at this right now, I know. I know that you would f cry if I said something to you in real life. I know you would cry. How do I know? Because I've done it to one of you in real life and you have cried this is my last resort okay i i honestly don't believe this happened at all um I, I would love to know who she's talking about here can whoever anisa jama emotionally traumatized or something uh please please come out to tell their story maybe make a youtube video titled like my experience with anisa jama about how she emotionally destroyed you in battle she debated you in the marketplace of ideas and you just you just couldn't take it. I would retweet that video personally. Get it to the top of the YouTube drama subreddit so they can talk about how Anissa's actually in the right here because she's a Muslim socialist or something. And Anissa, hey, if you ever see me in real life, be sure to talk to me. I will instantly burst into tears. You can see I'm tearing up right now. I'm getting emotional. I'm just a sensitive boy, you know? I, I, <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> she looks scary, man. Look at her. Just look at her that haircut it's scary me when every gas station in a 50 mile radius is out of winter greens ends i need to be on a leash i need to be on a leash a tight leash to be honest because i am unhinged i'm unhinged i need to be on a leash i'm like the joker don't let me outside i will not hesitate to maul the gas station employees face off with my teeth okay listen listen give me my zins she seems very very upset here and to an extent it's understandable because the entire internet was down her throat for a few years but realistically it's not totally unwarranted it's over stuff that you did you and ian collectively on his old fans I did not like the interactions that I had with fans. There were quite a few human beings that I interacted with that just sucked because I attracted a lot of people who sucked. Some people were very much like antisocial, weird basement dwellers. You know, the one time a month that they come out of their cave and they run into me, their favorite YouTuber. And what would they say? What would they do? Things that I am certainly not going to repeat. <laughs> I'm talking bad words. Words that we only say by describing the first letter? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. that, boy, man, what a powerful way of putting it. <laughs> you apologize to people who didn't need an apology like Tana Mojo. You apologize to her publicly and she's like, yeah, I think I was in the wrong actually and I didn't deserve that apology. I feel like nothing bad even happened to me. And it says, I dubbed has apologized to Tana Mojo. And I don't know how I feel about it, you know, because like Tim inevitably making me kind of canceled and mm -hmm. lose subscribers and have to apologize and all that type of stuff. I, I kind of think I like deserved that. 
And maybe that's like dark, like to say, I don't feel like I'm owed an apology. And maybe that's because I've accepted it so much that like people always ask me if you could go back in time and like make that never happen, like would you? And I always say no, because I feel like at the time it was obviously, like it was a very dark (laughs) time period of my life when it came to like self-reflection and trying to figure shit out. And like, I think I would be a completely different person if I didn't have that. I think Mm -hmm. it like, I was on track to just be so on my high horse and like egotistical and like nothing could go wrong that something going wrong gave me such a dose of reality that like this might not last forever so based on this why even apologize because you said in some old videos is that really it it's ridiculous and it shows a fundamental misunderstanding of why people enjoyed this content in the first place it's not because he was racist it's not because he was needlessly edgy all the time it's because he was genuinely a funny guy osteoporosis but now he and anisa have convinced themselves that they need to atone for the sins of their past all because they got made fun of when anisa started in only fans i also take ownership for the tana the the tana thing mm. was uh was my oh, that was so long ago was my idea was my stupid idea yeah. i was the one he that suggested was... like we can go to the <laughs> place it's just uh, in san francisco i'm like it is just in san francisco yeah that drive and everything and now i think back to it i'm like i can't believe we literally harassed an 18 year old child uh at her show they really didn't but if you want to have the understanding that you personally harassed a child if that's what you think you did then you probably should not be calling out other people for almost anything considering that you apparently harassed a child in real life. So Idubs has not really been posting quality content to his channel for a while now. It's kind of hard to understand why people would even watch the shit he's making. Not that many of them are. <coughs> Y'all are probably wondering what this is. And no, it's not a gooning grid meant to show you exactly where you're supposed to place your pecker for a rousing session of gooning. But thankfully for us, the real quality content is coming from Anissa right now, who seems to be taking the reins of content production by the balls these days. So she fired up a Twitch stream where she had a lot to say. Uh, people really cared about my clipping my stream because Ian wasn't really a share at all back then. And I think people wanted something. They wanted something, you know, more. And so my stream was kind of where people could go if they wanted to like make assumptions or like try and draw drama up, drum drama up. So I would get clipped a lot. Um, And yet you're live and you're sharing things and like not everything is curated and sometimes things come out wrong or whatever. So I was getting clipped a lot and uh, it was causing a lot of stress in our like relationship it was causing a lot of stress in my life i was paranoid i i every time i streamed i felt like i could i could say less and less because i was afraid of like things getting clipped out of context or just clipped in general and like put in a 500,000 viewed video about how i hate pyrocynical or whatever the topic was that you know week well yeah generally when you stream and reveal personal information about yourself people may want to talk about it or comment on it because you're putting it out there in the internet for them to think about and when you talk large content creators with a lot of subscribers people will also want to clip that and talk about it it makes sense but it's just funny to me to hear that the the content cop himself was scared that he was going to have his girlfriend clipped out of context or clipped to be in 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 commentary videos and have their dirty laundry talked about by the entire internet i mean you made a career off of making fun of people off of criticizing them off of calling other people out for stuff in their personal lives and on youtube it's not surprising that people would want to talk about you when you make yourself vulnerable like that i make a point not to spill any of my personal life because uh, honestly it's my personal life it's not for everyone to know online it's for me i don't feel the need to justify what i do in my personal life to my f***ing audience because they're not my best friends except for you you in particular watching this right now <laughs> you and me are best buddies and i love you it got to the point where I, I was like miserable streaming. I was I was really, I was spending a lot of time debating quitting. And Ian was like, well, maybe like there's something else you want to do. Like maybe there's like another avenue online where you can like make money and be happy and, and um, you know, still, still do this, but without streaming anymore. And I quit. I quit streaming basically. And I started doing... Uh, OnlyFans. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, bro. It is so funny that her solution to being made fun of online was how can I show my naked body to the internet? Great idea, man. That will definitely uh, that will definitely fix the issue. I know when I'm being made fun of online, my instant response is what if all the people who hate me could also see my butthole? That is the natural line of logic here. I don't even really hate that she had an OnlyFans. Uh, it's, it's whatever. It's a personal choice. It's what she does in her personal life, I guess. But she publicized it. She made it a thing that everyone can talk about. And she did it apparently as a result of her Twitch career not going that well, or like people were making fun of her too much, and then she was like, hey everyone, here's me naked. That, that, that just seems like a ridiculous line of thinking. But the internet is the internet, and sometimes when you put something out, people might talk about it. My first thought would never ever be, when people are making fun of me, what if I was naked right now? To us, it seemed like such a great idea. It was just starting to get traction. I would have been one of the first to like get in the door. And neither of us were insecure about like me doing it. I would argue I was more insecure about doing it because I have like body image issues and stuff. But I, we thought it would be great for like my self-esteem and proving to myself like I can do something like this. And uh, so and we thought like there would be pe certain people that would be upset about it. But like the reaction that we got was so like explosive. It, it it really knocked us off of our like it just everything went for a loop and and the timing was really bad because my dad had just you know started to really decline in um my, my parent or my uh dad started to really decline in um mental ability because of his alzheimer's and uh it just felt like the internet was waiting for Ian to trip. Does that make sense? I mean, when you are the guy who calls people out, the guy who criticizes people and makes fun of people, you're going to, to an extent, be in that position. But at the same time, I honestly will maintain that the OnlyFans thing was not that big of a deal. Did people make fun of it? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, Twitter was fun that day. It was crazy. You're a whore. You're a whore. Just admit it. You're a whore. You whore yourself out online. You yourself out in front of your family and your friends, you're a plain and simple. Did right-wing dudes call it cringe and degenerate and not like items anymore? Yes, obviously, to be expected. To an extent, that's what happened. But items was never a political creator. He was never somebody who everybody watched because he was he was like the coolest guy ever. It's because he was funny. He made good content. He responded to criticism well. He criticized other people very well. He picked them apart systematically in a very funny way. But I think it's the response that he gave thereafter where he was obviously very upset and the subsequent streams and appearances and comments about it and the thing with Sam Hyde, that really made things worse. The OnlyFans stuff is funny, undoubtedly, and some people got genuinely mad at it, but it's a mostly ignorable thing, because it didn't really have anything to do with what Idub said, or what Anissa said. It's a personal choice they made in her career. The problem is that when you were made fun of, you went on a really insane arc of apologizing to everyone for ever being mean to anyone in the first place. Because for once, you guys were the ones being made fun of, and apparently that made you realize that being made fun of online doesn't feel that good or something? Like, you just, you just realized that for the first time ever? They were waiting for Ian to trip, so so, like they could get on top and just start like ripping that's when it all started because it was something it was something right something that would have i really believe would have been small for most people but because ian had such little information about his actual self on the internet this was something uh because like i don't think people understand like ian's name birthday uh, like siblings, all of that is like completely false on the internet. He had never shared anything about himself uh, ever. And I think people were waiting for something. And once that happened, it, it kind of, it became, we, we just became really aware of like what Ian had. And when I say Ian, I mean, we essentially had created, which was like, it was a very hungry pack of dogs. It's basically like Ramsey Bolton from like Game of Thrones, right? Like they don't give a shit like who they're consuming, who they're ripping apart. Like they just want something to rip apart. And even more delicious that it's like the 
person that was taking care of them for so long. Do you know what I mean? And that has been something that has been really hard emotionally, like mentally to wrap our heads around. Because it feels like there's nothing, right? Like now it's just any time there's any attempt to like get up, you know, it, it, it's like fish to, or shark to blood or whatever. And here I am. I'm a shark. Arr. Here's Brucey. <laughs> the thing is, I think if they had like just ignored it, it would have been fine. There's this Sunny V2 thumbnail uh, I always think about because it's really funny. It's uh, it's a picture of Da Baby, okay? Da Baby, not you know Da Baby, the the rap guy. Oh my God! What the? Uh, and the text that's on it is never respond. I think he changed the thumbnail since then, but you can still find like copies of it from reactions where people are like, oh, he responded, never respond to baby. You can find the original thumbnail. And genuinely, I think that Ian did not need to make a whole video about, about the OnlyFans thing because he already showed that it was le epic and cool and he was let epic and cool sex work supporter by dating a girl who does OnlyFans. Like everybody kind of implicitly understood that. He didn't need to make a whole video complaining about the fact that people didn't like that he did did that like it's just it seems to go against every guideline and rule he followed before that so i don't know why he did that i don't know if anisa wanted him to make the video i don't know if he really did but looking back it just seems like such a dumb decision he didn't need to make a whole video that pretty much wraps up this video i love my girlfriend and i'm totally fine with dudes jacking off to pictures of her on the internet doesn't affect me one way or the other if you are upset by me admitting this then uh, I suggest you go idolize someone else. Like it just wasn't needed. You didn't really need to say this. At one point, uh, Anissa gets very mad at some, some schizo comments on her Instagram and she feels the need to go on a diatribe about it. Now he is broke, unemployed, and on drugs. Broke, unemployed, and on drugs. How is it even possible to turn a man from being a millionaire and loved to having, a, to having hate channels getting 10 times your podcast views. Next level personality disorder. And what did, you, what did he get in return? A manipulative tomboy that sells her body for a small monthly subscription fee. Somebody said, you need help. And they said, which part is incorrect? This person said, he's far from broke or unemployed. Uh, being unemployed doesn't mean that you're not ge generating ad revenue. I doubt he's on drugs. He was just in Australia. I doubt he'd be able to travel internationally on drugs this person replied to this confidently they said on the podcast that they were broke what well, i don't know where that came from uh his monthly views 1.2 million equal less than 2k per month which i don't know where that's coming from uh 2k per month in adsense I know because I have AdSense, which everybody's AdSense, like, clicks per whatever is different, but sure. Um, and he also said that he's, uh, he also said he's on drugs on his podcast. The rest is correct as well. Like, what am I, what do you do to that? What do you say to that? Like, somebody was, like, trying to have a fair discussion and they were like, no, nope, all true. They said this on their podcast. Said none of that on our podcast. That's what I feel. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Like, <laughs> people, there are people out there who legitimately, like, they don't see very much about us. And the stuff that they do see is, like, this shit. And then they're like, oh, that's so sad. Ian's on drugs. And that guy did make up a bunch of shit. I don't think Ian is on drugs or anything. Uh, but by obsessively talking about comments like that, by obsessing over the people who are mean to you online, ultimately, you kind of let them win. This person isn't telling the truth anyway. They're acting in, in bad faith. You can respond to crazy people for sure. There's no doubt about it. It makes sense. You can try to debunk the allegations if it becomes like a big widespread thing. But I don't think the majority of people think that Idubs is literally a crack addict, other than that he kind of looks like one sometimes. Was there really any reason to get this up in arms about some random guy who commented on your Instagram. I don't think so. And surely, surely you must have better things to do with your time, right? Come on. Don't play around, okay? Get to gaming.
I thought going to therapy would actually make me want to get off the internet. Like I thought like I would go to therapy and I'd be like, oh, of course, like I need to get off the internet. But for some reason, like therapy has made me want to like come back to the internet. I was, I love doing this. I love talking. I love riffing. I love entertaining. Um, I loved who I was career wise before I stepped foot into the iDubs community. I loved that. I was so happy in that aspect of my life, in my career. And I gave it up because I thought at the time that that was the right thing to do. I thought that it would stop people from like obsessively, I don't know. I thought it would, I thought it was the right thing to do. And um, it's weird. Going back to therapy has made me realize how much I don't want to like let that go. Which kind of sucks because like I, you know, I'm figuring that out now when, you know, I used to have like a very healthy base. And now it's like, well, what's the point? Like sometimes it feels like what's, what's the point? You know, like, can I even build it back up? Like, should I, should I, you know, go do trades or go serve or, but I feel like I would be remiss it's the right word if I didn't try. And that's cool and all, but a big part of content creation is, well, making content. She talked about how commentary channels have never worked a normal job, therefore they, they suck and they're worthless, right? Commentary YouTubers have no idea what it is to work a normal job, let alone put on a whole event, okay? You have no clue. So Anissa must be working really hard, right? She's putting the hours in, she's on her Andrew Tate grind set. I mean, she's getting stuff done. Well, Anissa has streamed four times in the last 92 days for a total of 13 hours streaming and an average viewership of 69.9 viewers. Funny number, by the way. <laughs> and uh, she peaked at 105 viewers. It doesn't seem like very much of a grind set to me. So where's the work going? Is it her OnlyFans or something? Like, is, is that the thing is taking a lot of time to deal with? I always love to hear people posture about how hard they work compared to other people compared to other content creators when they're they're putting in so many hours when the reality is what the f is Anissa even doing what gives you the right to <laughs> to comment on how hard people are working where is the hard work she's putting in I I can't seem to find it for someone who does only fans and is a very lazy content creator to sh on other content creators because you feel like they don't work enough is crazy a lot of them see Ian as their like friend like I think a lot of them think Ian is like sending them messages or something like, the way that people talk about Ian is, I don't know, it's very disturbing. It really, making YouTube videos but streaming the filming, that's so interesting. I feel like people here are more of a real community. I agree, I've always been a, a Twitch ho. Like, I've loved Twitch. I've been on Twitch since 2014. That's the other thing, that's, man, yeah. The people who say, like, I, like, used Ian or I'm only relevant because of Ian or whatever, like, I'm the least relevant I've ever been in my life, and I have been the least relevant I've ever been in my career being attached to Ian. I was a lot more relevant and a lot more, like, popular uh, pre-dating Ian on here. That's definitely true. She was more popular back then. I don't think you can deny that. Uh, but that's because she she chose to stop streaming, which she just talked about. She didn't make content, as she said. She thought it was going to be the right move to stop herself from being clipped by commentary channels. But the lack of personal responsibility is palpable because in doing that, you also just stop making content entirely. You can't exist out of fear of posting anything online because you think people are going to make fun of you. Like, especially when... I don't even think Anissa is necessarily a bad person. She's just like... If you had powered through that and not been worried so much about the hate or being made fun of and just pushed on, it would have been fine. People generally get bored of these stories in a couple days. They're not going to latch onto it forever. Unless you allow them to uh, make fun of you for their entertainment by constantly talking about it and posting clips about it and complaining about it and crying, like then people are going to make content about it because you keep it going. You give them something to talk about. If there's anyone that actually does uh, keep me accountable, it is... Uh for like sticking to a job it is ian actually <laughs> okay i wanted to quit uh of like so early on and ian was like no you promised two years at least i'm gonna make you stick to it and i did and i i mean i still do it so can i say that so just maybe just maybe here's a thought don't talk about it make the content that people want to see whatever that could be for you which apparently at one point you were doing and then you stopped 
Also, this idea that the people who don't like Ian just want to be his friend and they're like parasocially attached to him is hilarious. Do you really think that everybody right now that doesn't like Ian wants to be friends with this Jarvis Johnson ripoff guy who won't even say gamer words when he plays Call of Duty with the boys? Shut up. If Ian just made content that people wanted to see, he would be fine too. But the content he's posting on his channel is not very compelling, and the content that Anissa is making is mostly her complaining about nothing. I only know Ian from Creator Clash, and I did not come up on their work. Essentially, I found the backlash to his, de uh, to his development into his later adulthood uh, to be a form of, I want my friend in my head to conform to my behavioral choices and beliefs. I think that's a sound analysis. My therapist said it best. <laughs> um, it's really interesting having a therapist like look into all of this, but she said like the types of people who are angry are people who are pro have probably been told their whole life that their life would be better if they got a girlfriend. Um, and they're seeing Ian change because of a girl. Uh, or, like, they've decided it's because of a girl. And um, he's, like, you know, not doing what they want. And it's challenging their, like, ideas of what they've told themselves is okay. Right? Like, it, it kind of puts in their face, again, like, you... Like, especially when people say, like, oh, he's better or he's matured or whatever. Like, it makes them angry. Because it's like, why are you... Um, telling me that this is like what I need, right? Um, and she said, she's like, I I'm not saying they need to get a girlfriend, but I'm saying that that's definitely something that they've heard plenty of times in their life and it makes them angry seeing that manifest in someone that they held on to so like dearly of like, I don't, I can be like this. I can be like this guy. This guy's funny. This guy's great. I'm like this guy. We're friends. She had to see a therapist for internet hate. Oh brother, oh brother. Look, Anissa, I don't I don't know how many times I need to say it or someone else needs to say it uh, to get it into your mind. It seems a bit thick right now. Your frontal lobe is very dense, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to penetrate it, okay? I'm gonna try to get through it to communicate some information to you. People are not upset at Ian because he got a girlfriend. A lot of people have gotten girlfriends. Max Mofo got a wife and got married. Like, he, he, he didn't really change that much. His personality didn't really change that much. He was still funny. It's got nothing to do with that. It's because people are kind of upset. They, they don't want to watch him anymore because he changed his entire personality into sort of like a, a zombified wet blanket that is totally unrecognizable from what he used to be. This was him in 2015. Dear Gay Reed slash Nerfet, what's up? Are you doing good? Cool shit man anyway my brother and i watch your videos almost every day so yeah we get hell enjoyment from you man <coughs> thanks for the letters oh it's uh it's big girl panties you think i'm gonna wear this i'm not a large i'm a medium homesprung hey they smell pretty fresh maybe if my waist was a little bit bigger i'd strap the, these puppies on and give you a, give you boys a mean show ma 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 shout Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, <laughs> it smells like shit. He's having fun, he's cracking jokes. I mean, obviously there's edgy stuff there, but like you can still be funny without saying the N-word. You know that, right? And this is him now. I think that's always what it was, is there was like a fucking, a jock type character who like, I don't know, he played football and he showed up in his lifted truck, but he was like a little baby. He didn't know why the scarlet letter was a and why that was a thing. He was reading the Scarlet Letter with everyone, but he was so remedial. He needed, like, he needed time after class to learn a little bit more about the Scarlet Letter because he was a little baby. Why are we still learning a little baby Scarlet Letter, but we're also driving Ford F-150s? What is this guy even talking about? What is this video about? Who cares? Like, just be funny. That's all anyone really wants. Say the funny thing. That is your job. If you can't do that or you don't want to be a comedian anymore, then make a really interesting documentary. Oh, you, you stop doing those too. Then I think I will not watch you anymore. So Anissa, listen, from the bottom of my, my cold, dead commentary channel heart, um, I would highly recommend that you make good content. And if you do that, then people will start watching you and your husband again if you both independently make good content that people would want to see. 
If you don't do that, then what reason do people have to watch you or your husband when your job is to make content? You are content creators. It's time to create content, not just endlessly complain about nothing and cope about the fact that you got made fun of. And when she's not, uh, not making content, she's tweeting about complicated political issues that I'm sure everybody wants to hear Anissa weigh in on. Some creators I know who have been aggressively retweeting and supporting Israel's media team and Israel's PM through all of this have quietly removed their public support. You can remove it, but I saw it. We saw it. Look, I hate to break it to you, Anissa, but I don't, I don't think anybody's that scared of you seeing what they do. And I don't think anybody really cares to hear your opinion on the whole Palestine issue. You don't need to be in Frogan's Twitch chat to chastise Ethan Klein about his takes. Drink Starbucks, by the way. It's tasty. Yummy, yummy. Oh, oh, oh. I love Starbucks. I love the hell of cheese wrap. But they're always out. So actually, f Starbucks. I uh, hope the stock price plummets. Love the Starbucks. Oh, mm, mm. Commentary YouTubers have no idea what it is to work a normal job, let alone put on a whole event. I don't know why a traditional job is considered like such a cross to bear. To this day, I work a traditional 9 to 5 and run my channel mostly by myself. Even during university, it was a game of time management, part of being a functional adult. Even Mudahar, the owner of every 7-Eleven in the world, the, the taquito dealer himself, is calling you out. I think it's over. Time to throw in the towel, sister. And maybe stop obsessing over people who made fun of you over the past few years and just make good content. I'm not gonna lie, Ethan, I go to your subreddit all the time for like a a break from the insanity it's like the only sane place on the internet i swear to god that's the first time i've heard that wow that's it wow <laughs> sure that's a new one to what sure. I see, you should see what my twitter looks like um <laughs> i mean enjoy your hug box i guess if that's really what you want but uh to each their own i just want to ask him if you've always been in your pants no because since i've known you you've always had like ibs you've always been in yourself yeah, well... Look, iDubs, I know you've been going through a hard time, and I just want to say that my audience supports you. I support you, okay? L listen, there's a lot of poop maxers. There's a lot of diaper maxers in my chat. When you see those comments on YouTube that are like, as a Muslim bisexual guy, okay, listen, as a poop maxer, as a diaper maxer myself, I personally would like to rescind any ill will, any hatred, and any criticism I've ever expressed to you. I, I didn't realize you were like that. I didn't realize you were part of my, my minority group of, 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 of shitty guys, of guys who, who fill up the diaper on the daily, okay? Let's go. On that note, I think that you should be respected if you defecate in public. And I don't think there should be any consequences. Like, honestly, just on the floor of any business, it's cool. Wallahi. Take off your pants and your panties. Shit on the floor. Time to get swifty in here. So I decided to do some serious investigative detective work with my massive brain. Some criminal minds type stuff, some uh, some suits type stuff. Okay, I'm like a lawyer. I'm like Mike Ross. I'm typing out reports. Ooh, what's going on here? To figure out where the hard work is that these guys are putting in. Because it must exist. It must be there. Where is the hard work? These guys wouldn't lie. They wouldn't be delusional about the fact that they do hard work, right? Where are all of the countless hours in the shop coming from? And as it turns out, it actually goes all the way back to their new podcast on the Maximum Damage channel titled She Ruined My Career. This is where the hard work, this is where the countless hours are going like when people call me a succubus unironically because it means that i'm at least in some capacity hot to someone right you're achieving something i'm hot to someone right somewhere yeah because to be a succubus is i mean right. yeah call it like hot. think they're I insulting you they're like you <laughs> succubus you damn temptress yeah you siren and it's i like, also like being called a witch yeah i'm like half irish and we're pagan Witches. These are all sick things for women to be. Yeah, it's like, cool to be a witch. Yeah, objectively, like, badass. Yeah. Succubus, witch, Yoko Ono. Yeah. Drop Yoko Ono, bro. It's gotta be over. <laughs> it's gotta be over. No more. All really good things. Yeah, they're and only the bad if you inherently, like, hate women. Yeah, true. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like something terribly mentally wrong is going on here like maybe maybe she did need a therapist they're only bad if you inherently hate women so i decided to do a little research into them to figure out what she's talking about here and maybe why she thinks that being a siren is so cool we've all heard the story of the siren a mythological creature that would call out to men who are out at sea and and drag them to their doom the sirens are most prominently known for their appearance in homer's odyssey a story written by homer about odysseus the king of ithaca who is trying to return home after the trojan war he and his crew meet the siren 
Florins while traveling between Italy and Sicily, where they inhabit one of the coastal islands. I got some interesting information here from study.com, so shout out to them for this little write-up. The Sirens, according to a warning from Circe, a goddess who once held Odysseus captive, are winged monster women who are part bird and part human. The Sirens' goal is to lure sailors off course and to their deaths. Their siren song can hypnotize sailors, causing them to crash their boats into rocks and land. Sailors often venture into siren territory as they navigate the straits other resident monsters, including Scylla, a six-headed man-eating monster, and Charybdis, a ship-swallowing whirlpool. In the Odyssey, Odysseus instructs his sailors to plug their ears with beeswax, given to him by Circe, to prevent them hearing the siren song. Odysseus himself straps his body to the mass of the ship in an effort to be able to listen to the song of the sirens without steering the ship toward danger. With Circe's aid, the crew sails safely through the straits and narrowly avoids an untimely death. If I am to believe that Anissa here is, is being a siren, and she thinks that being a siren is cool and badass, then the implication, the implication from that would be that uh, apparently Idubs didn't strap himself to the ship very well. Instead, he decided to skip a wedding for Anissa's tattoo appointment. Yeah, I talked to Max about the the wedding situation. I, when he was first sending out invites, I was like really uncertain of how that was going to work out because I had some uh, kind of important plans here in the States. So we uh, we went a month earlier to kind of, you know, give him and Kat our well wishes. Um, that's why I was in Australia. And it's kind of also why we didn't do cold ones is because he was ramping up for his wedding stuff. On another note, Anissa is also very upset at the mythological autistic man known as Bo Blacks, who also appears in Homer's Odyssey, as we all know, where she's flexing the fact that she, like, had a few normal jobs before she was a streamer or something. I know a lot of them have never worked a real job. I know that for a fact. And if you have, you worked there for a week and you cried and you quit. That's the other thing that, that a lot of these people assume is that I never worked a real job. Bro, I didn't get on the internet until I was 21. I had to pay for my own f I was in college working like uh, a f***ing serving job, okay? I was doing both. I had four to five classes a semester, and then I would go work a serving job, okay? And before that, I worked at a pet store and a Dairy Queen because I function in society. How cool are you, Miss Dairy Queen herself, Miss Pet Store herself? <laughs> She will be respected. Yes, she will. She's a hard worker. And now Ian and Anissa are trying to rewrite history in regards to the whole Froggy Fresh saga, saying that them kicking him off had nothing to do with the OnlyFans comment. And it's actually because he was he was not showing up to training. Even advertise on your own socials. Yeah. Even just for your own Yeah, sake. I was like, I don't want to fucking tweet anything. Yeah. These fuckers are going to like just constantly like ream me yeah. over this decision that was very fucking justified. Yeah. Which and, I, and it had nothing to do with like the only fans comment yeah which still like oh yeah there's yeah there's loads of like r things that we can talk about i feel like i mean at this point it's like we're a year away yeah. from it now um it's just but, crazy yeah there's still so much to that whole thing yeah that people don't know, I know. and i'm like you know <laughs> i want to respect you know a lot of the people that we talk to mm. you know coaches primarily yeah um but yeah there were a lot of very justifiable reasons yeah including like not showing up to yeah to, to training training yes like it had there were mm -hmm. so many and i i think a lot of people banked on us being fair mm -hmm. and not sharing yeah everything yeah and that's that is exactly what happened that's exactly what happened yeah. now it's possible that froggy didn't show up to training but they could have just said that back then realistically they did not so i decided to open up the archives to you know reanalyze what happened back in the day to open the the history book so to speak one month before the event on march 24th happy punch would tweet pictures of froggy fresh training with you guessed it sam hyde it seemed that somehow Sam found a way to indirectly be a part of Creator Clash for the second year in a row. And there's no denying that the guy was seeking this out. He wanted to taint Ian and piss him off as much as possible. But this time, Ian wasn't content with just ignoring him. A few minutes after Happy Punch would tweet that photo, Anissa's mother, using a sock puppet account titled The Pied Piper, would reply to one of Anissa's tweets. Hope it's about replacing the imp. Referring to Froggy as the imp and the replacing, obviously meaning that she wanted him taken off the card. Presumably because she saw that he had been training with Sam High along with the promise that he would subscribe to Anissa's OnlyFans if he lost to Chris Raygun. If I don't hurt you beyond what anybody could have imagined, I will be so disappointed in myself that I 
will subscribe to Anissa's OnlyFans. <laughs> This account was often cited as Anissa's mom by Kiwi Farms users who noticed Anissa replying to it all the time. And some people also dug up a Kotaku article written about her called The Mom Who Moderates Her Daughter's Rowdy Twitch Chat. This article features a 52 minute long interview with Anissa and her mother talking about how she spends her days in her Twitch chat debating trolls and banning people who cross the line. At first, I was surprised. Maureen Jamha, 52, remembered when I spoke to her on Skype earlier this week. She was what you'd call a booby streamer where you'd attract viewers to your stream. Trolls who come to harass or hit on female streamers, she said. Jama is now one of her daughter's most dedicated Twitch moderators, tasked with keeping Rainbow Kids' chat in line so it continues to abide by Twitch's terms of service. With it being confirmed in the eyes of the community that this was apparently uh, Maureen, Froggy Fresh would respond to Anissa's mom, calling her out by saying the following, Better an imp than a pimp. Shout out your boy Idubs. Anissa, come get your mom. Anissa's mom would then reply to that tweet, to which Froggy would make a video response. Guess what, internet? I got even more news for you. Something I didn't even say about last night. Anissa's mom also made another tweet at me. She tweeted, classic case of brain damage. Better have that looked at along with your obviously shrunken balls. To a lot of people, Froggy was on the defensive and he was responding to the banter rightfully, as he had not been the instigator here. But apparently not everyone saw it as light banter, and shortly after this, Creator Clash would make an announcement. There has been a change in the lineup and Froggy Fresh will no longer be fighting against Chris Raygun. We will announce his replacement in the coming days. With just three weeks left, the countdown to Creator Clash 2 has begun. So you're telling me that with all of this going on, with all of this timeline that I've built here, the only reason Froggy was kicked was because he wasn't showing up to training. Don't you think you could have figured that out like months beforehand? Because I mean, this happened like weeks before the event was set to take place. I don't believe it. Honestly, it's somewhat understandable to be pissed at him over him disrespecting Idubs' wife or like collabing with Sam, I guess, because Ian and Sam were mortal enemies at that point and Sam had been being pretty mean to Ian and his wife, right? Publicly on streams and stuff. So why even say something like this? Like, I, I don't know, honestly. I just don't. I don't know why they're lying after the fact. Now on their podcast channel, they also have a Patreon where they run a podcast titled The Bog. And on this podcast, they've been talking a lot of sh uh, they they really don't like commentary channels, especially Bo Blacks. They saw that we raised 1.3 million for charity the yeah. first year, and they're like, "Well, if they're giving 1.3 million to charity. There, there must, must be, be a some... couple million going in their pockets. <laughs> yeah, some grease. Yeah, um, to the point actually where uh, when we were being uh, threatened to be sued, uh, they actually said the lawyer said that they didn't believe us that we lost mm -hmm. money on the second year. Yeah, um, and they wanted us to like show our like back end basically mm -hmm. um and show them that we lost money they like uh, said that they used the Bo Black yeah. video yeah. as like proof what yeah which is why <laughs> even though uh if you come out and you and you make videos where you aren't uh necessarily alleging things yeah. but everything that you're saying is like an implication yeah. uh it's still, it still fucking has real world consequences yeah, it and does. it's Bullshit. Some lawyers trying to use this as, as an fucking, argument. Yeah, man, Boblex is catching all the strays today. The guy, the guy just cannot catch a break. He's breaking down the American Family Unit. He owns a Tesla. Cringe. And he made a video about how Creator Clash was a objective failure. The guy can't catch a break. Truly. Okay. Anyway, I'm bored now. So uh, subscribe to me. Uh, send my videos to your grandmother, and I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, you know it's lad. You know that Hassan Piker. I'm coming to kill you. In Los Angeles, at your house! Or in the ring. No, in real life! Oh.